So what I wanna talk about today is I wanna talk about discipleship. I want you to know this, that New City is a church that's committed to disciple making. So put that in your back pocket, put that in your heart, put that in your head. We are a church committed to helping people take their next step in following Jesus. You've heard me use this phrase that we wanna go deep in Jesus and we wanna go wide in gospel impact. And I just wanna play on those two ideas for the next five minutes and 30 seconds. And when we say we wanna go deep in Jesus and wide in gospel impact, that means this, that we care about you. We care about the people that are in this room and we care about the people that aren't in this room. We care about those that are near and we care about those who are far. I want you to know this, as we talk about what it means to go deeper in Jesus, we wanna see you grow this year. We wanna see you experience more transformation. We are committed to your discipleship in Jesus. So I'm just gonna give us three ways we're committed to help you grow deeper in Jesus in 2023. We're a small church, we're a brand new church, we can't do everything. But here's a couple things that we're committed and maybe you'll make commitments to these areas as well. Number one, we're committed to gathering on Sundays. Unless it's Christmas Day or New Year's Day, then we're gonna just take those days off. But we are committed to being here every Sunday at four o'clock, rain or shine. And we just think that when we gather together, God is here with us, God is present, and he's working through the praying. He's working through the singing. I feel like that was one of the best times we ever sang together as a church community today. I just wanna thank the worship team real quick. You guys did such a great job. We just believe that God is working as we gather together to connect relationally, to sing, to pray, and to come under his word. So we don't just stumble into Sundays like there's nothing better to do in our lives. We think this is a priority. And we hope you'll think it's a priority as well. There's days you're sick, there's days you're traveling, but I hope you'll make Sundays a priority. We're also committed to city groups. City groups are just small groups of people meeting online or in each other's homes, and we're just growing relationally together. We're just growing relationally together. We're talking about the highs and lows. What I love about city groups is it just allows us to kind of pull back a little bit. We don't have to act like we got it all together. We can just kind of pull up a chair and say, I need help in this area. I need prayer in this area. We think that type of community is essential to your growth. We have six city groups meeting throughout the East Bay and we would love to get you connected. It's a time of relationship, it's a time of prayer, it's a time of studying God's word. It's a place to kind of go deeper with other people. You were created to know others and to be known by others as well. If you wanna learn more about our city groups, you can go online on our website or you can go to the Next Steps table in the back. The last thing I'm really excited about, three ways we wanna help you grow, I'm gonna move quick. We're starting something in the next month or so called Gospel Roots. Gospel Roots is an eight week discipleship track for everybody at our church. If you wanna grow deeper in your faith, this might be something that's helpful. All of it's gonna be done on Zoom during a lunch hour it's gonna kind of be cohort-based learning, and we're gonna to come together for eight weeks, and we're just gonna talk about some big topics that we think are essential to the Christian faith. So maybe you're here and uh, you're kind of learning more about Jesus, this could be great for you. Maybe you're here and you've been walking with Jesus for 10 years and you need a jumpstart to your faith, this could be great for you. This is for everyone in our church. We're gonna talk about what is the gospel. We're gonna talk about like what is the Bible, how to read the Bible, why we should trust the Bible. What is the church? What's the purpose of the church? What's God doing in this world? And what's my place in it as well? So gospel roots, we wanna root ourselves deeper in the realities of the gospel and prepare us for greater and greater impact. If you wanna learn more about gospel roots, next steps, or the website as well, I hope we're gonna do the, the eight week kind of cohort three times throughout 2023 and I hope you'll jump into one of those. Hopefully 10, 12 people in our first cohort just kind of working together and talking about some really, really cool things. This is one of the ways we wanna help you grow deeper in Jesus, but we don't wanna just grow deep in Jesus, we wanna reach wide in gospel impact. I don't want us to be afraid as a church 
to say, we want to see those who are far from Jesus to experience the joy and peace of knowing him. I want you to know this. We are not interested in becoming the biggest church in in the country. That's just not going to happen. It's not part of our church's story. And yet at the same time, we we don't want to be afraid to say we want to grow as a church so that more and more people would hear about the hope that is in him. So one of the ways you can partner with us in that is we wanna build an inviting culture here at New City. We've worked really hard to be hospitable, and I think it's one of the things that like, I love about this church, and maybe you love about this church. Like it's warm, it's welcoming, people are friendly, we love the diversity. I want us to kind of take that next step and build an inviting culture. where we're thinking about the people that God has placed in our lives, and we wanna love them so much that we wanna help them take their next step with Jesus. That we're not afraid to welcome people into this community because we know they're gonna be loved and cared for. We know it's gonna be a safe place where skeptics can ask questions. And we know the good news of the gospel is gonna be preached here every single Sunday. So 2023, New City, we wanna be an inviting church. I'm challenging you to be an inviting Christian with boldness and courage and joy that you would invite people into this community. We wanna go deep in Jesus and wide in gospel impact. How can you partner with us as we wrap up our seven minute family meeting? Thank you. (laughs) And by the grace of God, I'm gonna get 60 more seconds. We just changed it, it's an eight minute family meeting. Here we go. The best way for you to partner with us, we want to start everything we do with prayer. So I'm going to put three prayer points on the screen. And I hope maybe some of you guys will write these down or maybe take a picture of them. I want us to pray as we think about going deep and wide. Number one, Lord, as I step into 2023, awaken in me a greater passion to love God and to love others to love those near, that's people in this community, and to love people far. We want to be a church that exists at some level for those who aren't in this room. And if you're not interested in helping people find Jesus, I'm just going to be real honest in the most loving way I could say this, this just might not be the church for you. But I'm excited about how God might use all of us so that we would see more and more transformation. Number two, Lord, help me to do the simple things faithfully over a long period of time so that I can grow deeper in Jesus. Like, we don't need the mountaintop experience. You wanna grow in Jesus? Show up to church more often than not. Join a city group, start serving, live generously. Lord, help us to do the simple things over a long period of time. And then Lord, help us grow. Number three, give me the eyes to see how you're calling me to love people towards Christ and create opportunities where I can be an inviting Christian. I'm not asking you to like knock on every door, to invite every person you know, to just start praying that God would open your eyes to the right type of opportunities. And with courage, boldness, and joy, you would invite people into this growing faith community. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, super thankful for where we're as a church. You've been so good to us. It's by your grace and grace alone. And Heavenly Father, we wanna continue to look forward to where you're leading us. And we just know that you've got more joy for us, more peace for us as we commit ourselves to just being faithful with the simple things. So help us make those decisions and maybe make some changes in our lives so that we can just grow deeper with you, grow deeper with your people. And Heavenly Father, I really want the mark of maturity for this church, not to be that we can define every theological term. I want the mark of maturity for this church is that we've got a beating heart for those who don't know you. And we would give ourselves sacrificially and joyfully so more and more people might experience the joy of Jesus. We ask all of this, go before us, Heavenly Father, in this new year. In Jesus' name, amen.
hey, it's my joy right now to invite uh, a friend of mine and a friend of New City. I think he has been um, the guest speaker that we've had more often than any other speaker. Chris Davis is a pastor at Redemption Church in San Francisco. So if you know somebody that's looking for a church in San Francisco, please send them to Chris and Redemption. Um, he's been an encouragement to me. Carrie and I got to go to Miami this last week and do some things. And it was just good to not have to think about like writing the next sermon. So it was just, he served us and our family by allowing us to step away. Um, I want us to be praying for Chris and Redemption, man. Um, they've been going through uh, some challenging things with the storm. So they weren't able to meet as a church this morning because their buildings experienced some damage. And this is just kind of the life of a church planner and pastor. You just never know what's going to happen any Sunday. Chris, we're so thankful that you're here. I'm excited to sit under your teaching. Encourage us with that good news, brother. Uh, what a joy it is to be in the house of God together. Anybody remember when we weren't allowed to gather uh, with one another, when we weren't allowed to sing praises to God? Anybody remember uh, I, I told God during those seasons, Lord, I never want to take this for granted again. I never want to take for granted being able to sing the promises of, of the Lord over one another again. What a joy it is to be with you. I know, um, I know Pastor Gabe said, time him, don't time me. No, <laughs> no I'm just playing. I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, it's a joy to be here. I'm so grateful for your pastor and the team here um, we pray for you often and think of you often from San Francisco. Uh, a joy it is to be in the house uh, of the Lord together this afternoon. Uh, I, here's what I want to do. I, 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 we're going to look at a passage in John chapter 14. So you can turn there and put your finger there. John chapter 14, verse 16 through 20, and also verse 25 through 27. But how many people know that what we really need in 2023 is a real encounter with God. Like how, how many people know that it is not good enough to simply uh, listen to podcasts and to, to watch sermons on YouTube? And uh, how many people know that what we really need is a real encounter with Jesus? I love it because over and over again in, in the scriptures, that's really what we see. We see people, real people, common people encountering Jesus as he is going about his ministry. And guess what happens? Their lives are changed forever. <laughs> people encounter Jesus, people like Nicodemus, people like the adulterous woman, people in the scriptures as Jesus is going about his ministry, they, they encounter Jesus and their lives are changed forever. How? How, how, how is this possible? And I think one of the ways we're going to answer that this morning in John chapter, this afternoon, in John chapter 14, verse 16 through 20 and 25 through 27, before we jump in, let's pray together. Father, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to gather Lord, may we not take it for granted. Thank you for the treasure that we have in you and in one another. Lord, thank you for the stories that you're writing even in this room today, stories of triumph and stories of failure. And yet, God, we pray that you would intervene in our hearts and in our lives, that, that you would shape us and conform us into the image of Jesus, that we would never be the same again. Help us to encounter Jesus today, this afternoon, Lord God. May you make us like him. May you shape us and conform us into the image of Jesus. Father, as I so often pray, I pray that you would move me aside, that we may hear these words from you, that our ears may be open, that our hearts may be soft, that the word would fall on fertile ground, Lord God, that it would be living and active and effective and sharper than a double-edged sword. Speak to our hearts, I pray today. And all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. Um, we're going to spend our time again in John chapter 14, verses 16 through 20 and 25 through 27. Listen now to God's word as you read along. And I will ask the Father... 
He will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while in the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day, you will, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. These things I have spoken to you while I was still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. This is God's word, church. Amen? Amen. Amen. I I want us to sit under and spend our time under this promise this afternoon. You are not alone. You are not alone. It was uh, the legendary film in 1990, Home Alone. Anybody remember this? I mean, do you understand that in 1990 at the box office, this film grossed more than a half of a billion dollars? That's a lot of money now, and that was a lot of money then. Did anybody, anybody still go to the movies? I mean, uh, okay. Uh, uh. It's like my wife there and and like two people in here. Um, She loves going to the movies. But listen, this film is is all about um, Kevin McAllister, right? Like he somehow, someway gets left at home by accident that in the hustle and bustle of of getting ready for their family trip to Paris, they leave Kevin at eight years old home alone. Yes, sir. And he, 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 listen, is forced to kind of fend for himself for a few days. Unbeknownst to Kevin, there's a couple of low-life criminals who want to get in his house. And he's willing to do whatever it takes to defend the family home. This, this little eight-year-old is something else. Yes, sir. He, he uses nails and tar and feathers to defend the family home at whatever cost because he's left home alone. Love it. John, uh, here in John's gospel, this is a reminder that even as we launch into this new year, hear me this afternoon, you are not left home alone. I love it. Because when we grab hold of this reality, it does not matter what we face going into this year. There's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot of questions to be had. But the promise here in this gospel is that you are not left home alone. You are not left to fend for yourself that you don't have to fight and wrestle on your own, that you don't have to problem solve. I know you may have gone to an Ivy League school, but you don't have to do this on your own. You ain't got to figure it out on your own. Here you are. You may find yourself going into a new year laid off of work, but you ain't alone. You are not by yourself. And I love that this is a promise here in the scriptures. Here's what's incredible about this passage. Um, We find ourselves here in John's gospel in what's called the final discourse. And this is a portion um, of of the gospel that really happened in the upper room. And uh, it's a place in Jerusalem. And and, and what what it really tells us is this happens just before the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And the reason that matters is because whatever Jesus says in the final discourse is important. Like we ought to take note of what Jesus is about to give us if it's in the final discourse, because it's almost as if it's his last rites and last meal. He's about to give us this message and we should take hold of it because it's extremely 
important. So, so Jesus in his final discourse, here's what it give us. He reveals the person of the Holy Spirit. Verse 16 says it this way. Jesus says, the Father will give you another helper. Verse 26 says this way. Jesus says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Verse 17 says, the world neither sees him nor knows him, and he dwells with you. Even verse 26 says it this way. He will teach you all things. I want you to hear this afternoon that Jesus accredits personhood to the Holy Spirit. And and I think we can miss this sometimes as the Christian church. We we can focus on God the Father as a believer. We, we, We can focus on the crucified person of Jesus Christ, but we miss out on the beauty of the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And yet what Jesus gives us is something incredibly important. Jesus says the Holy Spirit is not just some mere far off spiritual being, but the Holy Spirit is a person. And this is Uh, particularly important about why Christianity is separate from every other major religion because Christianity says there is a personal God who wants to be near you, who wants to walk and talk with you, who, who wants to step into your journey. The very reason why Jesus stepped out of glory and wrapped himself in flesh because the God of the Bible wants to be near you person of the Holy Spirit is available for every man and woman that would put their heart and their confidence in Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit is a person. You need to receive that. But in fact, the word helper appears twice in our text, and some translations say comforter. Some, some translations say counselor. Some, some translations say advocate. And, and, and the idea behind this word in the original language, the idea behind the word advocate is to come alongside to help. Listen, I don't know. Y'all may have some perfect families, but, but there's, there's, some, there's some messed up stuff in my family. And, I, and I've been to court more times than I can remember where somebody in my family had gotten into trouble and they had to sit, hear it at the defendant's table. Had to get a lawyer for this family member. And at times, we we didn't have the money, so we would pull resources from from other family members. And this family member had to sit at the defendant's table. But hear me, they they didn't go to the defendant's table alone. They, 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 They had a defense attorney. And sometimes this defense attorney would actually appear when the defendant could not appear. The defense attorney is to speak for the defendant at times. Uh, The defense attorney is to, hear me, come alongside of the defendant to be their mouthpiece and to be their advocate. If you you say amen, I ain't got to preach too long. (laughs) The advocate is there to come alongside of us, to sit with us at the table that we're not there facing the brokenness in the courtroom alone. We have a divine defense attorney who is stepping on our side, who who is walking with us and caring for us. We are not in this thing alone. Theologian Charles Hodge says it this way, in court, you disappear into your advocate. We need an advocate today. Jesus is saying that the Holy Spirit is your advocate. The person of the Holy Spirit is with you, will speak for you. The person of the Holy Spirit will come alongside. The person of the Holy Spirit will stand in for you as your substitute. But, but secondly, here's what's interesting. Jesus reveals, I get this, I love this, the permanence of the Holy Spirit. This is good. Look at verse 16. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you 
another helper, hear it, to be with you forever. Look at verse 18. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Even in verse 19, yet a little while and the the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. In that day, you will, now, you will know, you will now know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. Jesus says this helper, this advocate, this comforter will be with you forever. And I, and I just need you to take hold of this this afternoon because some of us walk into Christian faith And we're walking on eggshells as if the first time that we fail, God will leave us. The the moment we disappoint him, the the moment we don't keep our our Bible time and we mess up on that fast, or the, the, the moment we are in traffic and somebody cuts us off and, you know, those magical words come out. It's just me. Okay. Oh, yeah. The, the moment error comes in our worlds, in our relationships, the moment we're too quick-tempered with our spouse and our children, the moment those coworkers are getting on our last nerve, <laughs> my supervisor just had to send that one little petty email, why? Sick and tired. And the moment we respond in a, in, in a poor way, we, we, we just assume and we feel the guilt and shame. We, we just assume everything we've lived out spiritually will just leave and God is no longer for us and no longer with us. And yet the beauty of Christian faith says the one who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. The beauty of the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit is this promise that the Holy Spirit wants inside of you, the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will be with you forever. That's the confidence that you and I can have. That's the hope that you and I can have. That's the truth that you and I can hold on to and walk with our heads held high, that even in failure, he will be with us forever, that no one can snatch us out of his hand, that he's with us forever. If your hope and your faith is in Jesus, you, you just have an advocate who is committed to you. You have an advocate who is with you through the thick and thin. You have a, a ride or die kind of advocate. Come on, hey. you, 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 you have an advocate that is going to be for you and with you, even in failure, even as you navigate the rough waters of this life, even in the unknown, he is with you and he is for you. Take that promise in the 2023. That our God, no matter what I go through, no matter my failure, our God, once my faith and confidence is in him, here's the beauty, takes up residence in me, and he is with me forever. That's the joy that you and I can hold on to. Um, I I remember um, my wife and I, when we um, first got together and we were preparing for marriage, uh, the, 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 the premarital counselor that we were sitting with and spending time with before he got married um, encouraged us to make some commitments in our marriage. Encouraged us to, you know, to create some barriers, some things that we would not do and some, some places that we, we, we just wouldn't take our relationship and our marriage, wouldn't allow it to go and to just write those things down and to verbalize and to make some commitments, even on day one, as we lost into our marriage. And, 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 and one of the things my wife and I talked about was divorce is just not on the table for us. Mm-hmm. And we, 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 we just verbalized that. We just kind of made that commitment. And, and hear me, I, I know there are some stories, even in this place, I, I, I'm not talking about physical abuse. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not talking about desertion. I'm not talking about adult. I, I'm, what I'm talking about is 
we just made this commitment to one another that, that we're in it thick and thin. Yeah. That, that, that we're, we're, divorce is just not on the table for us. And by the grace of God, we, we have been able to stick to that commitment. And yet this is the power of the Holy Spirit. This, this is the beauty of the promise of Christianity that, that God is with us and he is with us forever that he is with us beyond the amount of time a marriage will last, that, that he is with us and he is keeping us and he is walking with us forever. Thank you, Lord. That's the promise and the hope that we have in Jesus. Thirdly and finally, I love this, Jesus reveals the possibilities of the Holy Spirit. Jesus says in our text, that, that the helper will teach us. He says that the helper will remind us. He, he, he tells us that the helper is our peace and the helper will bring peace. I, one thing y'all you know, should know about me is I just love ice cream. I love ice cream. I I, um, I, I live in San Francisco, and I, and I feel like I've tried every ice cream place in San Francisco. You know, I, I, you, you can name them off. I've tried to buy rights, and I, I, I've tried them all <laughs> because I love ice cream. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of craft ice creams, and, you know, San Francisco is interesting because they get bougie with flavors. I'm like, just, just give me the, the, the normal good stuff, you know. And yet, one of the things I, I, I love about Baskin Robbins because they got just this option of flavors. Yeah. I mean, you can mix and match a little bit, and sometimes they can get creative. They just, you, they just lay it all out on the table, and, and you just get all of these options and, hear me, possibilities. And this is what the Holy Spirit presents, these beautiful, sweet possibilities that seem to be endless. You look at the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, the endless possibilities of the Holy Spirit. But I, I, I want you to notice verse 16. Jesus says this, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. It, it's, it's interesting that Jesus is saying this, the Father will give you another helper. Who's the initial helper if the, the Father will give you another helper? And I think 1 John chapter 2 is going to help us with this. 1 John chapter 2 verses 1 through 2 says this, my little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Jesus says, I came as an advocate and I withheld nothing from you. Like I came as an advocate to, to come alongside you and not just to, to enter into your life and to renovate, but I came to make you new. Jesus says, I came as your advocate, and he's saying, I satisfied the wrath of God on your behalf. I, I was your advocate. Pastor Tim Keller says it this way, it's the job of the second advocate to argue with you in, court of, in, the, with you in the court of your heart to make the case about who you are in Christ. Listen, New City, you and I, can walk in to this new year with confidence that no matter what you might face, you are not alone. That as you navigate failures in your world, as you navigate challenges, as you navigate relationships, and you might be navigating kind of your professional sector, and as you navigate relationships, I want you to know as you navigate in 2023, depression and anxiety, as you navigate having but also having not, I want you to know that you are not alone. 
you can be confident that our God is for you. Our God is with you, that he has not left you to yourself. He has sent a comforter for you. And that if you have been questioning the faith and if you have been resisting Jesus, if, if you've been putting off this decision to enter in and to say yes to Jesus, you are putting off the joy and the confidence in a God who will never leave you nor forsake you. You've been, you've been putting off this joy and the confidence of a God who will be with you to the end, who has not left you to yourself, but has sent a comforter in the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. He is with you. Amen, church? Amen. Father, we say thank you because you have sent Jesus for us to die the death that we could not die, to, uh, to, to stand in our place and do for us what we could never begin to do. And when Jesus ascended to the right hand of the Father, oh God, he did not leave us alone. He sent for us a comforter in the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. So God, I pray over New City Church, I pray they would be led by the Spirit. I, I pray as we live out 2023, this, this afternoon and this year, God, I, I, I pray that we would walk in the Spirit. I pray that the Spirit would teach us and to remind us of truth, that, that the Spirit would open our eyes and our ears to all that you would want to say and do. I, I, I pray that you would lead and guide us, that you that you would control our steps, order our steps by the Spirit, oh God. And Lord God, we just say thank you. You brought us this far. We say thank you. You've kept us and you've made a way, and we say thank you. Lord, you've opened doors that no man or woman could shut. We say thank you. Much of it is by the power of in the presence of the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us, to, to shape us and to make us over and to conform us into the image of Jesus and to testify to the power and the presence of our God. We give you praise this afternoon. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen, amen. amen.